Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today I'm gonna tell you about six of my favorite EUCs for beginning your EUC journey. So, let me tell you more about it. All right, so whether you are coming from a bicycle, an electric scooter, rollerblading, public transportation, or even a car, EUCs do seem very intimidating at first. And even though you might have already decided that yes, you want to get into the sport, it might be just very overwhelming to realize what you want to start on and if you don't want to watch the whole video i'll tell you right away about the four things that make up a great euc for beginners number one is a narrow shell if you have a narrow shell it's easier to keep the balance it's more ergonomic for your legs to just stand on the wheel and therefore a good ingredient for a beginners you see secondly you want this thing to be light so over 20 kilograms it, it will be getting more difficult to have the muscle strength and the core and balance in order to balance well on your EUC. so like this v13 even though it has pretty low foot plates now without the suspension once it leans too much oh i won't be able to grab it and especially at the beginning of your EUC journey it, it will be a bit challenging to find this sideways motion in motion balance on a electric wheel thirdly you will want to get a uc that has low foot plates so it's easy to step on the wheel and you won't have any trouble to mount this wheel like a ladder now fourthly i think that wheels with a 16 inch tire and especially a wider tire will be a bit easier to learn on so whilst there is the big old m104 and you can probably the quickest get the balance on it this doesn't translate into other wheels and on the m104 it's very difficult to ride around the city especially as a beginner because it will make you lose your balance when riding on various surfaces so generally speaking 16 inch by two and a half inch width and upwards will be great for beginning your uc journey now you don't also want to have a too big wheel like this 22 inch Emotion V13. I think the sweet spot is 16 by 3 inch or 18 by 3 inch or 20 by 3 inch tire. All right, so with that said, thanks for watching if that's all you needed. But if you want to find out about my top six EUCs for beginners in six different price categories, and by the way, all of those EUCs I tested personally, I even owned uh, several of those wheels, then stick around till the end of the video. I would also really appreciate a like and subscribe. Um, it took me several days to make this video and it took me years to get experience from all of those EUCs what are their faults what are their pros and cons why are they even good for beginners so if you would drop in a like i would really appreciate that thank you all right so with that said i still do love this thing without suspension and let's get on to the first you see on this list which is the king song 14d First up on this list, and also the cheapest one by a long shot, is my actually very own Kingsong 14D. This is a very small portable wheel, 14 inches, with a nice trolley handle and a 420 watt hour battery. While I did teach quite a bit of people on this small wheel, it might not be the best for you. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video to find the perfect beginner wheel for you. All right, so getting right into it, let's start with the biggest pros of this wheel. Well, definitely it has to be the price because at 900 euro, it's difficult to find something else that has a better price to performance ratio than the Kingsong 
14D. It is very small and light maneuverable so it will listen to your body a lot once you are starting out. The shell is very durable and I didn't hear of many cases of I don't know BMS or motherboard failures on this wheel. It does come with RGB here on the side as well which doubles as a battery indicator. It has a USB-A charge port for charging your phone on the go that's sometimes useful. Uh, Bluetooth speakers as well on board they're right here on both sides and a decent set of front and tail lights by decent i mean usable the front light is not that bright in the night but it will guide you at those slow speeds that the king song 14d is reaching and this type top speed is 30 kilometers an hour so not that slow the foot plates on this wheel are also relatively low so the weight distribution is nice as you can see there's also nice padding on the side here for your uh, feet and ankle this helps quite a bit and i had to put an additional pad here on top uh, to have just a bit of more grip on the side of the wheel this stock pad though is also comfortable and nice to see coming out of the box on the king song 14d charging time is also fast at around three hours with this stock fanless charger i really love how king song integrates the handle and lift switch with the trolley handle so pushing this thing around the store it's no problem at all and due to its lightweight you can carry it up a flight of stairs without any issues whatsoever the water resistance on this wheel is also pretty great i wrote the 14d plenty of times in rain only thing i did just in case is cover the top button with tape um, so like no water seeps in there as well but apart from that well it doesn't have an ip rating but from my experience no issues with riding this wheel in the rain and definitely at this price and weight it still has quite a bit of performance this can tackle up to 25 degree inclines uh, if you live in a hilly area this will be actually better suited than for example a cheap scooter like a xiaomi or ninebot max Cool, so with that said, let's get on to the cons. And right out of the bat, the biggest con is that this is still a small wheel. So while it's nice for, I don't know, children to learn on it, really great for children, uh, you might outgrow it really quickly because the torque on this thing and speed, while nice, is still very limited. So you can overpower it relatively easy if you lean a bit more in or if you catch a bump, the same thing might happen. And while the top speed is listed at 30 kilometers an hour, Usually I just go about 20 to 25, especially at those higher speeds. There isn't a lot of headroom on the Kingsong 14D. So if you would hit a bump, you can overpower it. Yeah, just keep it at 20 to 25 kilometers an hour. Um, that is with my weight of around 75 kilograms. The wheel is still small at 14 inches and relatively narrow, so it won't provide you the best balance at lower speeds, uh, as well as it won't be just as comfortable as the wheels with 16, 18, 20 inch wheels, which I'll talk about later in the video. So for bumpy roads, for curbs, for, you know, just uneven terrain, this is not only well, not that comfortable. It's actually dangerous combined with the small battery and power of the wheel. So while I know how to ride it and I even can get upstairs with this if they're small, um, you need to remember that there is a power limit to this wheel. The wheel also doesn't have a axle that is that strong. So dropping off curbs is not recommended here. And if you're a heavier rider, I would look into one of the bigger wheels later on in the video. Now, because the battery is also so small at 420 watt hours, you can go about 25, 30 kilometers far, but below 60 or 70 percent you won't reach the top speed of 30 kilometers an hour and at under 50 percent you might just go 20 22 so the most fun on this wheel and the most usability is really at those upper 50 percent of battery the stock foot plates are also relatively small you can check out how small they are compared to my foot now it is still usable but not as nice as it could be um, so while the king song 14d is a good wheel to start on um, the bigger ones might be actually a bit better because they're a bit more stable a bit more manageable and a bit more comfortable in those later day-to-day -day scenarios now when it comes to accessories on this wheel i'll cover it in with, with stickers especially like those i have this furniture form also on velcro so i can move it around and i added some spike grip pads from uc clubhouse which give me more grip because the stock foot plates aren't uh, that uh, grippy and apart from that really nothing more to add you can play around maybe with brake pads but on such a small wheel which is so nimble so agile you really don't need that 
that much. All right, with that said, let's get on to the more expensive ones at under 1500 euro. All right, and next up we move on to the under 1500 euro category and there we have none other than the Emotion V8 lineup of wheels. Now with such a wheel you can already do a lot more in the city and due to its shell size, its narrowness and its 16 inch tire it might be actually a better choice to learn on than the Kingsong 14D. I did test the Inmotion lineup of wheels already a couple of times and now the newest iteration is the V8 S with the biggest battery size ever in a Inmotion V8 wheel with 760 watt hours. By the way big thanks to the owner for loaning me this for showing the V8 in the video. This one has about 520 watt hours, so a bit bigger than the Kingsong 14D, but not by a big margin. It will get you a range of about 30 to 35 kilometers and a top speed of 35 kilometers an hour. Although I would advise to just go in the speeds of around 25 30 kilometers an hour tops on this wheel. This is still not yet a wheel which you can really lean hard on. This is still a wheel that has some limits when it comes to acceleration, torque and power. All right, so let's get on to the biggest pros. All right, so one of the biggest pros of the Emotion V8 is as said that it's very narrow. It's a good wheel to stand on, nothing will be here in the way and uh, therefore it's really stable as you're really close to the center of mass. The foot plates are relatively high. Uh, I don't have uh, much complaints here though as it's still a very manageable and well balanced wheel. I love the side pads here on the top as they're wider in the newer versions so you can grip the wheel relatively well and there's also a trolley handle hidden here so you won't damage it if you fall on the wheel. It's also in a nice position, good to hold and you can always lean it against something compared to the Kingsong wheels which you can't because the trolley handle is angled there. So it's very nice. It's maybe not the best construction when it comes to like taking it out, but it works good enough. Here we also have some uh, nylon off pedals installed. I'll tell you a bit later about other accessories that you might want for this wheel. Next to the trolley handle we also have the handle so it's nice that you can grip it while you're learning and you can also easily lift it up because there is a hidden lift switch here underneath the handle. Really comfortable to just get on this wheel uh, go up a set of stairs, take the trolley handle out and just keep on riding. The front light, uh, well here's the front, the front light is decent but it's not the most brightest one. I like the enclosed shell design so um, you do not get a lot of mud sprayed here on the back and everything is just very sleek and modern looking. There's also LEDs on the side, you can configure them to what colors you want and there's also a speaker that warns you if you overpower it but you do not have a Bluetooth speaker on this wheel. But if I wanted to sum up those biggest pros, it is that it's still a lightweight wheel under 15 kilograms, so it's very manageable, it's easy to lift, it's good to train for all sizes and weights of humans, it's relatively well equipped and you don't need many accessories in order to make it work. Actually you don't pretty much know accessories, maybe except for a tail light, which I'll talk about in the cons of this wheel. It's very well balanced, it has a good software, and if you want to have a good wheel to learn on, this might be just your best bet. When it comes to water resistance, this wheel is pretty great, and it's also relatively easy to disassemble. So in terms of rainy weather use and changing a tire, this is actually a great choice for those reasons. But it's not all rainbows and sunshine, let's talk about the biggest cons of the V8 F or Emotion V8 lineup. All right, so one of the biggest cons of this wheel, um, especially if you want to have a wheel for all purposes for, you know, going far, going close, going sometimes on, uh, on a street if there is no bike path available, is that once you get used to wheeling, this wheel will feel very limiting after a while. It's relatively easy to overpower, especially if you're a heavy rider that is over 80, 90 kilograms. This does not have endless torque and if you will be accelerating and you hit a big bump, you might overpower the wheel causing you to fall. Um, those wheels also, 
just in my experience, I don't know the, all of the statistics, I don't know the data. We don't have sadly a da database yet of uh, failures on wheels that would be very useful. But I've come to notice that those boards are not the strongest. The motherboards or the controllers. I did uh, fry um, I guess a fuse on the Immersion V8F before as I was doing some more intense hill climbing and this might be also the case for you especially again for heavier riders those wheels will be more stressed might be better to get something with a stronger board like the Kingsong 16S. When it comes to long-term use of the Inmotion V8F uh, I'm still not sure about uh, the battery management system and long-term life of the battery. I'll make another video about the BMS situation here in passive cell balancing as that is something I need to deep dive even more into as there was also a lot of comments under a video I made before um, but I've heard from several users reporting that there is a massive drop of range after um, a couple thousand of kilometers and um, yeah just for long-term use I don't feel really like this is the best bet now I might be wrong again I don't have a, that much empirical data I just have the info that I do being a EUC YouTuber and getting a bunch of info from you guys in comments, in DMs, etc, etc. A couple of more things in the downside uh, section is that the taillight is pretty much non-existent. Well, you can get this panel off and I guess scratch a bit of surface out of here. It's just plastic painted or a, a sticker behind this. So you, could, you might try to want to do this or just get an auxiliary light on your helmet. This light is very little when it comes to nighttime riding. Uh, another thing was that in earlier V8s and V8 models the pedals were just not strong enough and they could break. Uh, now the owner here installed those Nyono pedals so these will be plenty strong. Uh, just if you are wanting to buy a used V8 you need to check if the pedals are all right, if there aren't any cracks, if the pedals aren't too flat for uh, the wheel. Another weak point of the V8 is that it doesn't have a very strong axle so for heavy riders again this might become a bit of an issue or if you want to do some more performance riding um, as those axles can break and did break in the past. I hope that Emotion makes a hollow bore motor or some sort of stronger axle version of the Emotion V8. And this is true to actually a lot of the wheels in this lighter category under 18, 17, 19 kilograms. There is pretty much no wheel that has a very robust axle in this weight and price category. Now, when it comes to accessories that I would recommend for this wheel, uh, there ain't really much to it as I don't think you really need pads to make this wheel work. Uh, you can ride plenty well without pads on this wheel. Well, Chapeau de Rue can confirm you uh, about that. But there is two things I would recommend upgrading if you want to just have a bit of a better ride on the Emotion V8. First up, uh, you can have a protective cover, which is sold by Emotion. It is great for learning. You can also grip the wheel better than um, it is just a great option if you want to keep your wheel safer and still have all of the functionality of your wheel but just less scratches. The second thing I would recommend is either printing yourself some inserts for the pedals to make them grippier out of 3D printed material or buy some uh, um, aftermarket inserts for uh, those pedals or maybe even screw in something into um, the small layer that you have over the foot plates because the foot plates as they come stock they're not pretty grippy and especially if it's raining if you have some sand on them you might be prone to slippage so the optimum choice would be nylon oaf like here but I know it's expensive but if you'd get it well it, it's worth it those pedals work amazingly well for any wheel. All right, so with that said, this is the uh, Emotion V8. Let's go on to the under 2000 euro price category. All right, guys, so next up on the list, we have not this, we have this, the Emotion. V10F under 2000 euro. So big thanks to Norbert <laughs> for letting me have both of these wheels. We'll talk about this one a bit later. But first, let's start with the Emotion V10F. And 
this wheel is actually the wheel that I personally started riding on. Well, not this exact one, but a Emotion V10. It is a wheel that will get you through most of the city. It has already a pretty substantial amount of power. It's not that easy to overlean and with a 960 watt hour battery you'll have a range of around 40 50 kilometers with my riding style but if you go slower you can have definitely more so with this 20 kilogram wheel for about 1600 euros something like that at my e-wheel you can already do plenty and it's still quite easy to learn on so let's get on to the biggest pros of the emotion v10f all right so one of the biggest pros especially for beginners is you can see this thing is narrow so you'll have your legs pretty close to the center of mass of the wheel and you'll be very comfortable on it this is a very comfortable wheel to ride on the foot plates are also very flat now they could be a bit higher to make you grip the wheel a bit tighter but flat is also pretty comfortable because it's also so narrow it's very easy to store anywhere lean against the wall and also lift up this wheel just weighs 20 kilograms so no problems no bigger problems with uh, getting it up and down a flight of stairs and as I said this form factor is just really really convenient for beginners now the foot plates are also relatively big but this is not that grippy uh, I recommend either changing the grip tape or putting some spikes in there or getting nylon off but these will also do the job in most cases just watch out when it's wet I really like the design of it here's also some RGB underneath so you can be pretty visible uh, at nighttime riots. Here we also have a tail light, which is relatively visible, but it's also obscured a bit by this trolley handle. So it could be a bit better, but it's great that it's there. Up front, we also have a decent front light. And it's not that bright, but luckily it also doesn't blind others that much. And I really love that the trolley handle is super tall, as you can see. It's, uh, it's very comfortable to just push this wheel around in stores. It's a bit wibbly wobbly, but it will do the job good enough and you can easily hang your helmet on here as well. And then you can lift it up, push it around. This wheel is really friendly for commuting, getting in and out of public transportation, putting it in, uh, into stores, just walking around really great here another thing i really like about the v10 is that the uh, tire is a bit wider than what you usually get at this price point and class of electric unicycle so this is a two and a half inch tire 16 inch by two and a half so this will provide you a bit more stability at those lower speeds than a narrower tire like we have on the v8f which is 16 by two and one eighths on top of that uh, emotion provides a ip rating for uh, the v10 and V10F, well now we just have the V10F and the weatherproofing on this wheel is great really no worries about riding in rain whatsoever uh, even in snowy conditions uh, not bad for riding this wheel and there were no issues with it whatsoever underneath the trolley handle here we have one speaker here on the bottom and another here in the front so you can listen to music while riding the speakers are not the best quality but you can listen to music while riding and also the power button is pretty conveniently placed here when it comes to performance as said it's pretty much plenty enough for usual city riding 40 kilometers an hour of top speed and torque that will get you up most hills well every hill that you have in the city but most of those like ramps that you have around next to stairs um, for heavier riders, it might be still on the slightly weaker side. Maybe a V11 or a, a more powerful wheel would be better then. But as said, for most riders, especially at the beginning of your journey, this should be plenty. Now let's get on to the cons of the Emotion V10F. So the biggest con I have right away when starting out your UC journey is that this just folds up by itself. It's not locked in place. The trolley handle will be the first thing that breaks if you ever have a harder fall on the V10. So uh, usually if I see a V10 with a higher mileage, well, not this, because this is pristine after 10,000 kilometers, the trolley handle is what is bent in the first place. Otherwise the shell is pretty robust, but the trolley handle can belt bent. The stock charger is 120 watts. So about eight hours full, full charge. This is not the fastest charger actually. Another thing that you also heard before, the axle here is not the strongest. Now on a V11, we have a hollow bore motor, which is which has a stronger axle. 
well it doesn't really have axles it has those four bolts on each side but here we have just a axle and under heavy loads jumps jump dropping off curbs uh, this can sadly break so i hope emotion up updates that in the future on the initial batches of the v10 the pedals used to break here as well so if you get a used one just make sure that there's no cracks here or you buy a new aftermarket or stock emotion pedals for uh, the wheel the center of gravity on this wheel is also pretty high the battery is up here on the top and uh, this can provide some wobbles sadly at higher speeds when you, once you're starting out now the balance of this wheel in general is not bad it's just slightly top heavy so once you make turns it's maybe a bit uh, prone to falling to the side it's not as stable as wheels that have batteries mounted on the side of the shell the tire change is also not the easiest here companies could look after bigode which have the pretty much easiest tire change ever on any wheel now another topic is the long-term battery life this one is well pretty much perfect after 10,000 kilometers I've heard of some units that are dropping in range after a while as said before with the V8F this is a thing I'm still investigating so yeah if you if you would get a used one um, just make sure that the battery state is all right uh, with that said uh, let's talk about the best accessories you want to have for the wheel and as it is you don't need actually anything for it this is a bog standard v10f and you can ride like this without any issues norbert was riding like this for 10,000 kilometers if you want to have a slightly better ride or you want to pimp up your v10 a slight bit i would suggest you getting the cover if you're learning on the uc and you can also take off the trolley handle if you don't want to uh, damage it uh, further on you can get some inserts a set or nylon foot plates which are grip here and if you want to have slightly more braking power slightly more acceleration although this is not a performance wheel um, you can get some side pads so in total i wouldn't recommend jumping on this wheel no like crazy stuff crazy off-road but for most day-to-day -day scenarios in usual situations in the city the v10f will be plenty and a good wheel to learn on all right let's get on to the sub 2000 no two and a half thousand euro category All right, guys, so next up on the list in the under 2,500 euro category, we have none other than the Kingsong 16X. And this wheel is owned by one of the biggest 16X endorsers ever, Ratlos or Tadjo. So big thanks for letting me ride this wheel and uh, make a video about it in this video video in the video for the video anyways the 16x uh, pretty much has it all for beginners uh, it has amazing heaps of torque it has a very very torquey motor it, it can do insane inclines but what that means is that for even for heavier riders the torque here is plenty so if you live in a hilly area don't consider the wheels before even though they might be okay this is where it's at and even when accelerating from zero up a hill this will have the torque to get you up there uh, when it comes to top speed it's around 50 kilometers an hour however i wouldn't recommend riding this wheel over 40 because it doesn't have as much headroom um, at those higher speeds it has a great handle that you can hold on to while you're learning and it also doubles as a lift switch and then you can also lift it up and it becomes one of the highest and most comfortable trolley handles out there on the market. Now it's a bit wibbly wobbly, but it gets the job done. The wheel is also very stable, so it's easy to push around and learn on. Now, it was actually a very close battle between this and the 18XL, and me personally, I do have a slight preference towards the 18XL because it has a bit more headroom at those higher speeds, it has lower foot plates, and it's more robustly built. But for beginners, what makes the difference for me is the tire. We have a 16 by three inch tire, and at lower speeds, this will just give you the right amount of stability that you need when starting off it's a bit of a chunky wheel it's a bit wide so you will need to get used to it and it might be not comfortable for you uh, initially but well it is what it is we sadly you can't have it all in those EUCs. The lighting is okay in the front, although you can see, well, there's just a bit of dust here fogging up. Um, and you also have RGB 
going from the front till the back which also doubles as a battery indicator just like on the 14D. We also have lights here on the bottom here which light up when you're braking. Not the best uh, setup but with those RGBs you should be visible at night. When it comes to further pros it also comes with a speaker which is pretty good. It has a bunch of bass and right away with the setup you have with the bit of uh, squishier material here you do not need uh, pads that much but i would still recommend them as a accessory and i also love how dense this wheel is this wheel has plenty of power plenty of range and it's still manageable additionally it, it, with weighing about 25 kilograms or 24 kilograms you can still lift it with one hand you can get upstairs with this wheel and if that's too heavy for you you can push it upstairs as well and if you need to put the wheel oftentimes into a car trunk or into some higher elevated spots, maybe get a pet ramp, then you can just roll up the wheel easily into its final destination. <laughs> this wheel does also give you plenty of range. There's a 1500 watt hour battery, which gives me a range of about 80, 90 kilometers with my usual 30 kilometer an hour average speed. So even when you're starting out on this EUC and you'll have pr plenty of range, you will be sure that once you reach those higher speeds and once you can go those bigger distances on EUC, this will still have plenty uh, of range to get you places. Now let's get to the cons of this wheel. Okay, so one of the cons of the 16X is that it charges forever with the stock charger. It takes like 10 to 12 hours. You can uh, connect two of them, but this is a additional cost. It doesn't come with a screen, which slowly becomes a um, standard on newer wheels. So if you want to guess your speed, you need to check it on your cell phone. If you want to check the battery, also cell phone or as said, those uh, little LED indicators will do. Another gripe I have, and you heard it probably a lot of times in this video, axle. This also doesn't have a very strong axle. I had a friend break his axle at 20,000 kilometers and he wasn't that heavy. So for heavier riders or for doing more jumps, more dropping off curbs, this is not the best wheel. Don't do jumps on it. It is more of a flat ground wheel. I hope that King Song updates it. They updated a, the S18 to a hollow bore motor and the S22 was out of the box hollow bore motor. They need to do this to all of their wheels as well. This is an actual problem with those cars iron axles. However, I was testing quite a bit of those at 16 axles, never had it break on me, but I do want to let you know about this. Another con is that, as said, at, the, at those higher speeds, it's not that stable. I do not push the 16X pretty much ever over 40 kilometers an hour because this is when you can overlean it, this is when you can fall. So even though they advertise 50 kilometers an hour, I go just 40, maybe tops 45, and slowly creeping up to this top speed. Oh, and there's one more problematic idea that I forgot about in the 16X, and that is um, that the plastic on the inside of the shell, close to the L-hangers, that's what you stand on, uh, does tend to crumble inside of the units, or some screws get loose in the motherboard, forcing it to jitter a bit while you're riding. So I don't think that is happening as much on the 18XL, uh, so yeah, I wanted to let you know about that. There's really no easy fix for that. You would either then need to get a new shell or just jerry-rig something in there, put some metal reinforcements in there. I hope uh, Kingsong fixes that out of the box in the future. The weatherproofing is okay on this wheel, but it's definitely better on the 18XL. Especially in those uh, older models, you could see dust creeping up into uh, the light here in the front and all in all the whole inside of the 16X could be covered in dust. So this is a downside. If you want to have the absolutely best waterproofing or water resistance at this price, I would still go with the 18XL. Now let's move on to what accessories you will need for the 16X or accessories that I would recommend for this wheel. Well, there's actually not a lot that you need. First of all, I would definitely suggest getting some uh, side pads, albeit uh, nylon -ove. I would recommend the medium size here or some Grizzlas. Um, we also have the nylon -ove pedals here as again, best choice. If you want to get something cheaper, the stock pedals are okay. Uh, I would recommend getting some spiked grip pads from UC Clubhouse for that though. And then you're pretty much all set. I mean, the light is fine. Maybe some additional light on your helmet because this is not the brightest thing and maybe a charger. 
other than that, this is a pretty uh, complete solution out of the box. So with that said, highly recommend this wheel and still, even when it came out years ago, it's still great. I hope they update it to a hollow bore motor, maybe give it a bit more oomph because it's not as powerful as it possibly could be. Definitely the battery could give more power out of it. And yeah, 16X, great wheel. All right, so next up on the list, under 3,000 euro, we have none other than the Inmotion V11, a wheel that I've owned twice and sold twice. <laughs> but I think it's still a wheel that I can recommend for beginners. Well, this is the only wheel I have here on this list with suspension. Now, I was also debating for a long time if I should include any other suspension wheels here. But be it the S22, be it the T4, be it, I don't know, the Veteran Patton, all of those wheels are pretty big and chunky. And I would say that if you want to learn on them, you need to be prepared for a challenge. Now with the V11, everything is still relatively attainable. As, as you can see, just like the V10, it is relatively narrow. Uh, the center of mass is pretty low and it's not as heavy. It's just 27 kilograms. So while 27 kilograms might be already a bit <laughs> difficult to lift up a set of stairs, you can also uh, push it up. But it's still lighter than all of those heavier wheels with suspension that weigh like 35, 37 uh, kilograms. All right, so with that said, let's, uh, let's talk about the biggest pros of this wheel. Uh, starting off, it's got to be the lighting. The lighting of the V11 is amazing. You have a daytime running light, which is great for slower speeds and just letting people know that there is something approaching. And then you have a great light with a cutoff beam for nighttime riding. This light is absolutely phenomenal. The only thing I wish it would have is a height adjustment because you have to have the pedals at one level in order to have a nice beam. In the uh, taillight department, it's also phenomenal. Wraps around to the side a bit for increased visibility. The lighting on the V11 is amazing. The next pro is, of course, that we have suspension. Now, it's not the most sophisticated suspension, I'll, and I'll talk about that in the cons, but you do have it. So if you have any bigger bumps, if you have not good quality roads, this will make the ride a lot more comfortable. The trolley handle is good. You have it at a nice height and it's fairly comfortable, easy to put in, put out, and actually very sturdy. Underneath the trolley handle we have a lift switch so you can lift up the wheel, but as I said, it's already not as light uh, at 27 kilograms. There is no uh, display, but here in the front we also have a very nice battery indicator. When it comes to weatherproofing, it's also great. We have a IP rating here, both for the battery and for the whole wheel. Now, I'm not sure if there was any issues with water coming into the speaker or in the front, but in general, the motherboard here is sealed off from other compartments. We have the battery, which is sealed. The performance of the V11 is also plenty enough for any type of city riding. This can go up 40 degree inclines. So that's it has plenty of torque, top speed of 55 kilometers an hour, although I would recommend just going maybe 45, 50 uh, tops, and the range is about 50 to 60 kilometers with my riding style. But if you are a lighter rider or you ride to just speeds up to 20 or 30 kilometers an hour, you will get more. My friend here, uh, Jacek, um, could go up to 110 or 120 kilometers. He is very light though at 60 kilograms on one charge and still have battery left. So. Depending on your riding style, you will get this in this range. I think in general, the Kingsong 16X does still have a bit more range uh, than the V11. Talking about the batteries, they're pretty low down in the shell, which provide a good stability. In the back, we also have dual charge ports, so you can just buy a second charger in, in order to make the charging speed uh, a lot faster. So the stock charging speed would be around five to six hours, not too bad with two chargers around three hours. And here we also have a USB-A charge port for your phone. All of that secured behind the nice flap, not too bad. We also have a kickstand, which is great to see. Not the sturdiest one, but it is still here. And from this point on, we will have actually strong axles on wheels. So here we have a hollow bore motor, which will be good for uh, higher weights or bigger weight riders as well. 
So no worries here if you're a heavy rider, this is a good wheel to get. And the tire is pretty wide, 18 by three inches. So this will provide you with tons of stability at lower speeds, just as well as on higher speeds. In general, the V11 is a great all around package and no wonder that a lot of people actually buy it as their first wheel. With that said, let's get on to the cons of the Emotion V11. All right, so the first con has to be in the suspension department. Uh, well, if you have suspension on any wheel, this means there's more points of failure and more stuff can break over time. And with the V11, we have just usual sliders in here and they can get loose over time. Here, it is very tight, but after a while, is it might not be the case so then you might need to do some jerry rigging or you might need to install new sliders in, in order to ride with a tight slider setup uh, further on this is also air suspension so if there's any sort of leak in the pistons you need to get new ones and you need to pump them up a bit more in the in the winter time or the air might be just leaking out slightly so you need to check on that every month or, or so and therefore you need to get these bottom uh screws out and pump it up. So there's just more stuff to do on a suspension wheel. The suspension also has just eight and a half centimeters of travel. So um, this is not as much as, for example, the Kingsong S22, which has what, like 15 centimeters or 18 centimeters of travel. Basically, if you bottom this out and this is just linear suspension, it doesn't get harder uh, the suspension progressively if the suspension compresses it will just launch you off from a um, big pothole or a speed bump. So you need to be very aware of that, that there's limitations to the suspension on this wheel. This is also a set linear suspension and nothing progressive. There's no rebound adjustment. So the suspension here is very basic. The foot plates are very high on this wheel. You can't adjust the height of it, which might be a bit uh, tiresome at first when you learn on the wheel and you need to really step up and down from the pedals if you are just riding around the city. I wish there would be a different setup to this, but this is what we get on the Emotion V11. It's great for off-road riding and taking sharp turns though. One of the reasons I never got a V11 in the end is just that the ride is not as fun as other wheels. It's not as zippy, it's, it's not as wanting to ride as for example a Kingsong 16X, partially due to the high foot plates and to the controller and motor setup on this wheel. It is just not exciting, but you can make it exciting by your riding style or you just prefer comfort, then you have no problems whatsoever. I think that the shell is also slightly easier to damage, having more edges here and those screws at the beginning tended to fail, but they changed that after a while, so those should be strong enough. I also have to mention that there were a couple of fires with the Emotion V11. Now, in the States, I've heard that those were faulty units with maybe some water damage or other types of damage, and I know of one more case in Europe with a LG M50T battery pack. Now, personally, if I would ever get to have a Emotion V11, I would buy it only with a non-LG M50T battery pack. So I heard that the newest badges are with Samsung 50Es. So I would recommend if you were to get a V11 to make sure that it has the right battery pack. So Samsung 50E or just not LG M50T. Keep in mind, that's not to say that every wheel with this battery pack has a problem. It's just to say that all of the battery fires that I've ever heard of, well, in small numbers still, uh, were with this particular cell brand and model. Lastly, in the cons department, this wheel is more expensive than the 16X and it will get you not as far. It has slightly less torque, I would say, and is less agile. So while you're paying more in the V11, you will have less range and slightly less performance, but you will have more top speed. So there it trades some blows. If you prefer suspension, then well, here you have it. So now let's talk about all of the accessories on this wheel and what I would recommend getting. Well, first of all, you can get, um, well, all of the parts here essentially are from Hulai Market. So cheers, Wukash. We have a uh, extended mud flap, so you don't get so much mud sp sprayed on your feet. There's also some bumpers uh, from Hulai Market. And we have those stock in motion side pads, but you have to actually buy them separately. I strongly recommend getting side pads here because not only does it make your acceleration easier and braking, but it also prevents you falling off from the wheel, which can happen, as said, with this type of suspension. Now you could also get uh, custom foot plates, but these are 
they're good enough. The grip tape is actually better on those compared to the V10 and cheaper wheels, but you can also get some nylon for it in order to have the best ride. Oh, and I see that also and Norbert has some additional bumpers here on the bottom. But other than that, lighting is great. If you want to have actual custom power pads, you will need some fairings for it. I think Grizzla has it, Hulai Market as well. But make sure you ride with power pads on this wheel. So with that said, this is the V11. Let's get on to the next wheel. All right, the weather is uh, <laughs> stormy to say the least. And the next and most expensive wheel that is suited for beginners on this list is a wheel that I own personally. It's the Medrun German Max. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's time to go under the bridge. Oh, run away! So wait a minute, Adam, you're saying that a wheel that costs three and a half thousand euro, well, it's discounted now, so check out the link below, and weighs just shy of 40 kilograms. You think this is suited for beginners? Well, I think so, and I actually let quite a bit of people try on my veteran Sherman Max as their first wheel ever, and they really liked it, and they could also figure out how it works. Even a person that weighed just shy of 50 kilograms. Cheers, Anya. This might also be due to the street tire that I have installed on this veteran Sherman Max. But uh, nevertheless, if you are ready for a challenge, if you are ready to have a bit of muscle leg, because with a heavier wheel, you'll have a bit of a, more of a challenge than on a lighter wheel, then I think that the veteran Sherman Max out of higher priced wheels, out of heavier wheels, is one of the best UCs to start on. Let me tell you about the biggest pros first then. First of all, it's very well balanced. The batteries are here on each side and it, the center of gravity is very low. You can see that the batteries go really down low and the foot plates are low as well. So you get great balance and stability when you go slow, when you go fast. The wheel is also ergonomically very nice, although it's a bit on the wider side. So I think that a V11 or a V10 will still have a nicer shaped shell for beginners, but it's not terrible here. It's not like an S22 or any of the newer wider wheels that have suspension. All of the accessories on the Veteran Sherman Max are pretty nice. Well, except for the blinding light. That's why I installed this one. I wanted to also have a bit of a stronger taillight as well. If you want to check out my full setup, oh, it's raining hard now, of the Veteran Sher Sherman Max, then check out the link here. When it comes to the trolley handle, it's great, it's tall, it's so well balanced. This is one of the wheels that is the easiest to push around in stores. There is also those roll bars. It's easy to grab the wheel on them and push around. It doesn't have a lift sensor, but it's easy enough to lift up with one hand or with two. Oh, it's raining. Look, look at the rain. Another thing I love about the Veteran Sherman Max is that it has amazing performance, amazing range, amazing torque, amazing top speed. It's great for heavy riders, for light riders. It's just a wheel that does so well because it has low foot plates, great motor, great software. Well, there's really nothing to miss here in terms of performance and range. Upwards of 140 kilometers of range, top speed of 80, so it's plenty of headroom for usual day to day riding, but it still has plenty of torque for braking acceleration. It also doesn't run hot in hilly areas, so if you're a heavier rider, if you're a lighter rider, you wanna go up steep hills, or you want to just go on flat surfaces, anything you throw at it, pretty much the Sherman Max can do it. Well, except for stuff that requires a bit more suspension. Charging out of the box is relatively fast at around six to seven hours. You can buy an additional fast charger. Then it's three hours or the maximum or minimum charging times with a 14 amp charger, well, more like two hours. So what are the biggest cons of this wheel? First of all, it's the roll cage that can rust. It's a bit of a bummer. Uh, it's best to put some um, accessories on it in, in order to make sure that the wheel stays in good condition. Oh, by the way, the waterproofing is great on this wheel as well. There is just these air vents here that go underneath the board. Maybe only some water could get potentially in through here for this crease. There is some 3D printed pad over this 
if you want to make sure that it's 100% water resistant. But even so, I never had any water problems on the veteran Sherman Max. Oh, also the, the buttons, um, water can potentially get in through here. It's best to put some tape over it. I don't have it currently, but it's been fine for now. Another con of the veteran Sherman Max, and this is actually a real con, is that out of the box, you don't get a lot with uh, this wheel. You don't get a mud guard. You have pedals, which are a lot more narrow and just are covered with grip tape. They're good enough, but they're not as good as they could be out of the box for a three and a half thousand euro wheel. And naturally, if you want to get the best pedals out there, you want to get some nylon oaf. Oh yeah, I have the ones with 20 millimeter studs, so plenty of grip on mine. Oh yeah. You need to buy pads because the stock pads are not that good. You need to buy a better light because the stock one is blinding. And possibly if you want to do more street riding, it's best to get a street tire, either like this or some Michelin City Extra. This is also a tip for you beginners. If you want to start riding on a wheel, I think it's easier on a veteran Sherman Max with a street tire. The dimensions are 80 by 90 by 14. Sadly, the tire change is also not that easy on the wheel could be a lot better. Veteran could take a look at the newest Bigode wheels that are out there. Another con of the Veteran Sherman Max is while it is very condensed and it has a lot of performance to weight, it's still 40 kilograms. So you will need to push it up the stairs or you need to be really strong to lift it and carry it up a flight of stairs. It's also a bit heavy to put inside a car trunk. For me, the comfortable limit of lifting a wheel is about 35. This is already on the edge with 40 kilograms of weight. And sadly, it's not cheap. While the price is recently going down and if you want to buy a Sherman, you can also buy a regular Sherman. Um, it has some cons. I will maybe make also a video of it on Sherman versus Veteran Sherman Max so you know what's up. They are up for cheap now. And even though it's a more expensive wheel than others, I think it's worth the price to have something that really works well, has a huge base of parts lots of uh, you know accessories to choose from people know how to fix them and just to tell you how durable those wheels are i have about 5000 kilometers on this particular veteran sherman max and i just needed to exchange the bearings at one point and that's it i changed the tire because i wanted it and rest just works fine ever after so it is very comfortable to have suspension and i miss it on this wheel at times but i'm just so satisfied that it always works <laughs> That's really awesome. I think the veteran Sherman Max is actually a great starter wheel. Naturally, if you uh, are ready for the slight challenge of the weight of this wheel. I guess I forgot to mention the pros. This wheel is really robust. It has really good electronics. Sometimes there are some issues with the BMSs, but other than that, this wheel is just bulletproof. And the biggest mileage wheels I've ever seen have been veteran Sherman Maxes. All right, so what accessories do you want for your wheel? Now, I will not tell you all of them here. You can check out my video on the Veteran Sherman Max customization for that. But I think that the things that you actually need for it, most importantly, is a mud guard, some side pads, because side pads are crucial for better braking and acceleration on this wheel, and possibly a light that doesn't blind others. You can see here the beam. Yeah, it starts around here. And maybe a seat if you want to learn how to ride seated. Could be also included in the box, but it's not. So all of those things you need to buy extra. With that said, that concludes my list of best wheels to start your EUC journey on. And if you are actually still here after watching this long ass video, then leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.